Hi YouTube, today we're going to talk about palettes and by palettes I'm referring both to the wooden palettes that I paint on and the color that goes onto those palettes. So um, what I'm showing here today are two, the two palettes that I use the most. Um, this one here is a no-name brand palette that I picked up back when I was an art student about nine years ago. And this one here is a really gorgeous uh, new wave palette that I was gifted at the last PSA conference. Um, and uh, I'll talk a bit about how I prepare the surface because people are always asking me how I made the surface look like this. Uh, with this one, um, what I did was I, I toned the surface with a grayish brown color and then I proceeded to seal it with the old fashioned linseed oil method. That's where you take linseed oil, you put it on a paper towel and you rub it in and saturate the surface. And you do that every day for a couple of weeks until the surface is completely soaked with oil. And since it's a drying oil, it, it does dry. And the pores of the wood begin to fill up with oil and eventually you get this really slick, smooth, non-absorbent surface, which is great. That's one of the main problems with wood palettes when people first start using them is that it wicks in the oil from your paint. And a lot of beginner students get frustrated with a wooden palette because it looks so nice and romantic and they want to have a wooden palette. But then they start using it and it gets stained very quickly and it's wicking the oil out of their paint and it's really difficult to work with because they're trying to mix paint on it and the oil is getting sucked right into the wood. So the trick when you're working with oil, with, uh, oil on wooden palettes is really to seal the wood before you start working on it. And you can use the linseed oil method like I did. I picked it up from, a, from an old art text and it was, it's kind of a traditional method I suppose. It's also a really dangerous method which I found out later because if you have a oil soaked paper towel out, um, there is so much heat generated from the oxidization of the oil on that paper towel surface that uh, it'll actually spontaneously combust. And I've had a couple of friends who've actually said they've seen rags burst into flames in front of their own eyes. I haven't had the pleasure of that experience, but you know, I look back on my art school days doing this in my little one bedroom apartment and I think you know things could have gone sideways pretty badly, um, but I'm glad they didn't. So uh, what you... <laughs> What you see here is um, years and years worth of paint buildup on the surface of my palette as well. Um, this really pretty surface is a natural effect of having a wooden palette and it's one of the funnest parts of having a wooden palette and it's, it's what makes wooden palettes look so sexy and beautiful. Um, at the end of the day I just sort of wipe it down with a paper towel and whatever paint's on there just sort of rubs into the surface and this brownish grayish mottled color ends up being the average of all the different paints that I had on my palette that day. Um, this palette here was originally this color when I bought it, but that color to me was just a little bit too light and too bright and I actually was really attached to the color of my old palette. So I toned this surface with a color just mixed from white and brown and black and a bit of alkyd medium to help it dry faster and I put that right on the surface and that was all I had to do. Just had to let it dry for a few days and then I could start painting on it. So that was a much faster way to get a finish. Um, <clears throat> if you are selecting a wooden palette, I would just advise a couple things. First of all, you want to make sure that when you're holding it, it's not going to strain your arm or your wrist. Um, those rectangular wooden palettes, while they look really cool, actually are, are not balanced and they'll tip and they'll, they'll strain your thumb and they'll create all sorts of shooting pains in your forearm, unless you've got forearms of steel. And uh, it's, it's also important to look for a really lightweight one. Like this one's about as thin as a piece of cereal box cardboard and it's, it's just fantastic. And, and it's actually incredibly strong. You know, I've traveled with this in my suitcase with all sorts of stuff piled on top of it. And, and it's just, it's really tough. It's great. It's not cracking on me. And then this one here, well, it is quite a bit thicker and I was originally a bit leery about that because I thought, you know, this is going to be pretty heavy. Um, it's actually so beautifully balanced. You see it's just resting on my forearm. It's just completely balanced, so it's not straining me at all. And then furthermore, when I actually hold it up against my body, which is what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to rest it with it resting against your abdomen. So it really ends up being almost no weight at all. It's a, it's a really fantastic design. The only thing is I'd say, you know, make sure you wear an apron or a smock when you're using it because paint will have the tendency to dribble down and then ruin your shirt if you're not wearing a smock. So um, I use both these palettes almost equally. This one is just fantastic generally, but if I'm using big brushes and painting big areas, which I'm doing more and more these days, I tend to use this baby right here because there's just more space to work in. And uh, that about sums up my palettes.